Get your Bibles and go to the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter number 4, verse 1 through 15. And there you will find the assignment that the Holy Spirit has espoused unto me to share with you today. It is good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. We have no other agenda but to share with you what God has shared with us and to watch you grow thereby. Can you say amen? Amen. When you have it, say amen. amen. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said to him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him and saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt not tempt, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Jesus returned in the power of the what? He returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Can you say amen? Remain standing, I'm going to pray with you, but for the next few moments I'm going to be talking about anointed for the altercation. Anointed for the altercation. Yeah, that's it right there. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. Anointed for the altercation. And it sure is a fight. Say amen, somebody. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us as we open up the word of God that we might hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. I believe you to do amazing things. Bind the devil hand and foot. Take authority over him in this place and around the world as we open up our hearts to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Let's go to work. It is to me one of my favorite passages of scriptures, not because of the grimness of the text, but because it tells me a lot about life. The last time we heard from Jesus, he was 12 years old in the synagogue. From 12 to 30, he lives a life in complete obscurity in the text. 
we know nothing and can find nothing about the 18 years that preceded him turning 30 years old. When he turned 30 years old, everything began to change. It is interesting to note that David was anointed to be king when he was 30 years old. It is interesting to note that you became eligible for the priesthood at the age of 30. It is interesting to note at the age of 30, Jesus hits the screen of the text again in a most dynamic way. He goes from obscurity to celebration, from isolation to celebration. He goes from isolation, point one, 18 years of nothingness, to celebration where he is brought down to the front by John the Baptist and is celebrated of the Father in a moment of celebration. And he goes from celebration ultimately to altercation uh, in the wilderness. Can you say amen? amen? It is interesting to know that in the process of celebration, one of the most dynamic moments in my mind of the text is when John the Baptist is standing there baptizing people in the Jordan River and he looks through the crowd and somewhere in the midst of the crowd he sees Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. And immediately Jesus was brought from the background to the forefront. It is interesting to me because when God gets ready to bring you to the forefront, you don't have to self-promote. When God gets ready to bring you to the forefront, he can point you out and move you to the forefront if that is where destiny has designed for you to be. He's not going to bring you to the forefront because of your ego. He's not going to bring you to the forefront because of your imagination. He's not going to bring you to the forefront because your mama told you you belonged in the forefront. God does everything according to his purpose. As soon as you decide to settle on that, you will have a lot more peace. When you stop trying to manipulate God to following your agenda and start to understand that God has a purpose for your life and he gave you or will give you everything you need for that purpose. If you needed to be taller, he'd make you taller. If you needed to be shorter, he'd make you shorter. If you need to be richer, he'll give you more wealth. If you need to be more popular, he'll give you more popularity. Everything that he gives you is not about your desire as much as it is about his purpose for you in your life. And God can do it quick. He can do it suddenly. He can do it in a hurry. He can do it without reservation. In one moment, Jesus went from being a face in the crowd until every eye was on him as he made his way through the crowd, came down into the Jordan River, and there he was baptized in the Jordan River. I want you to understand a few things. His validation first came from man. You don't get to the point that you don't need somebody senior to you to point you out. If Jesus didn't start until somebody pointed him out, you need to wait till somebody points you out. He was not self-appointed. John pointed him out and said, Behold, the Lamb of God was taking away the sins of the world. I will avoid the temptation to linger with the John and Jesus in the Jordan River and equate it to them being in their mother's womb when they first, when Elizabeth and Mary first kissed. They have not, we have not seen them since they were swimming in their mother's fluids and now they're back in the Jordan River again and this time they're outside of the womb but they're still in the flow. <laughs> Uh, I said they're outside of the womb, but they're still in the flow. If you're going to get anything done with God, you've got to get in the flow. 
When, the, when there's a flow, you got to step into it. You could sit there with your legs crossed and your head back playing with your phone and not get in the flow. It is your choice. Jesus could have stepped around the Jordan and not got in the Jordan, but he came, became obedient and he stepped down into the flow. I'm amazed at the people who come to church on Sunday who never step down into the flow. They got up, they got dressed, they put their clothes on, they turned on their laptop, they turned on their iPad, they turned on their device, and they're sitting there, but they never get in the flow. Why would you come if you're not going to get wet? Why would you come if you're not going to get wet? Why would you come if you weren't seeking a deeper relationship with God? Jesus and John are standing in the flow. I pray that the Holy Ghost would flow through this place today. I pray that he would flow through this place until you decided this really is a worship service and I'm going to get into the flow. I pray that he would come into this place until quiet people started praising God. I pray that he would come and flow through this place until sick people started getting in the flow and getting healed by the power of God. I pray that he would come in such a flow until depressed people got in the flow and had their mind uplifted by the power of God. It's all in the flow. It's in the flow. It's in the flow. You need to get in the flow. He is not going to break in. He's not going to send a tsunami. He's not going to send a hurricane. He's not going to send a tornado. You have to, as an act of your will, humble yourself and step down into the flow and watch the Holy Spirit meet you there. John the Baptist, who is the premier prelate of his hour, he's drawing all the crowds, all the people are talking about him. God is using him in a unique way. He has broken the tradition of his fathers. He has decided to go about it in another way, and yet God is using him effectively. He has forsaken the sanctity of the sanctuary and gone into the wilderness, and there he ate wild locusts and honey and dressed in camel's hair. He was not a to be different. Oh, can I stop a minute and ask God, give us some more preachers who are not afraid to be different, who are not running from controversy, who are not scared of what people are going to say about them, who are not afraid that they won't get invited to dinner. If you're going to preach for God in this season, you got to be radical enough for people to talk about you. They talked about what he wore. They talked about what he ate. They talked about where he stayed. But he kept on preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Next Sunday, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Next week, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He wasn't trying to entertain you. He wasn't trying to impress you. He was trying to fulfill his assignment and do what God had called him to do. Can I get a witness in this church? Is there a witness in this church? Somebody bear witness in this church. If you're watching on the internet, say, I'm getting in the flow. I'm too old to be around the water and not get in the flow. I've been through too many demons to be near the water and not get in the flow. I've been too sick to get here now and not get in the flow. Whatever it takes for me to get the breakthrough, I'm going to get in the flow. I mean, I'm going all the way down in the water. I'm going to get saturated. I'm going to get soaked. I'm going to get overwhelmed. I'm going to allow the Spirit of God to take me out. I am getting in the flow. There's somebody in this room. You may be in the balcony. You may be in the back. You may be listening in the hallway. But God is calling you out of the crowd and down into the flow. You got to be willing to walk through people and past people and around people. If you want to get wet with the glory that God has for you, you have to say, excuse me. He's calling me. Excuse me. He's calling me. Excuse me. He's calling me. I'm going to get in the flow. Somebody that's going to get in the flow, take about 10 seconds and give God a praise in the flow.
yeah, 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 I'm gonna get in the flow. <laughs> I got too much to fight not to get in the flow. I'm going through too much not to get in the flow. I've been under attack too long not to get in the flow. I can't afford to sit there and be cute. I got some things I gotta get a breakthrough for. I gotta get in the flow. I got children in trouble. I got parents in the hospital. I need a touch from God. I came to get a touch from God. I didn't come to show off my cute dress. I didn't come to show off my stilettos or my tie. I came to get in the flow of the Holy Spirit. God, send me some people that want to get wet. Send me some singers that want to get wet. Send me some deacons that want to get wet. Send me some elders that want to get wet. Send me some pastors that want to get wet. I came to get wet. I came to step into the flow of the Holy Spirit. Everything that God will do is done in a flow. <laughs> Everything that God will do is done in a flow. From the book of Genesis, where the Spirit of the Lord moves upon the face of the deep, God is always moving in the flow. To later on, when he sends, have Noah to build an ark on dry ground, he says, I'll send the flow, you build the ark. God always moves in the flow to the Red Sea when he stopped it on each side and drew it back so that the children of Israel could walk through the flow. From the creation of man through the womb of a woman, everything God will ever do, he will do it through the flow. If from the bleeding side of Jesus Christ stretched out on Calvary when they hung him high and stretched him wide, the New Testament was in the flow. It's in the flow. It's in the flow. It's in the flow. So you can choose to get in or you can choose to stay out. You can choose to step in or you can choose to step out. But God's going to send the flow and the flow is coming your direction. I prophesy to you today, the flow is coming your direction. There's the flow coming from God and is headed to your house. There's the flow coming. You can choose to get in or you can choose to stay out. You can choose to get in or you can choose to step out. Who's stepping into the flow this morning? Holla at your boy. So I want to talk about the flaw. I want to talk about the voice. There were three voices that, that honored him. First, it was the voice of John that told him who he was. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who told the people who he was. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He talks to Jesus as he is the Lamb. But the voice spoke from heaven after he was baptized and called him, Behold, uh, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So while John saw him as the lamb, the father saw him as the son. The Messiah, the Holy Spirit saw him as the Messiah because he descended like as a dove. He was not a dove, but he descended like as a dove. He was no doubt as gentle as a dove as he came to sit on him. And from that day forward, they ceased to call him Emmanuel or just Jesus. They started calling him Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christos, Jesus the Anointed One. Jesus the Anointed One refers to him in his messianic power. So we know that he's the Lamb and we know that he's the Son of God. And now the Holy Spirit has let us know that he is the Messiah and it all happened while he was wet. You'd be surprised what you can learn about yourself while you're wet. The reason you're not any further than you are is that you're too dry. If you learn how to get wet up under the Holy Spirit, God will show you who your wife is. He'll show you who your where your job is. He'll show you when to buy the property. He'll show you when to make the decision. God can't do anything till you get wet. But if you get wet, God will start telling you who you are, where you came from, what you're going to go through, what you got to do to get the job done. Is there any Anybody on Zoom that's willing to get wet? Or are you just going to sit there and look at me? Or are you going to step in and get wet? I didn't come this far not to get wet. I've been through too much hell not to get wet. 
I expect something from God. I want to get wet. Somebody open your mouth and praise him right now. When the Holy Spirit descended, like as a dove, it is the first place in scriptures since Genesis where we see all three aspects of God manifested in one place. The Father spoke from heaven, the Son is in the water, and the Holy Spirit descended like as a dove. It is because when Jesus was baptized, he was raised up from the dead that the fullness of the Godhead might dwell in him bodily. There was not any part of the Godhead that was a dis- connect to who Jesus was. Both the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son come together into one. He was raised up. Jesus spoke of the resurrection. He says, no man takes my life. I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'll pick it back up again. Paul says, the same spirit that quickened Jesus' mortal body shall also quicken our mortal body. He also says that Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. So was it the Father that raised him, the Son that raised him, or the Holy Spirit that raised him? It was all three of them, for all three of them are one. And in one concert, he lifted him up. Oh my God, imagine how many devils would run if the fullness of the Godhead was gonna raise you up. Look at your neighbor and say, I feel like getting up this morning. I've been down too long. I feel like getting up. I feel like getting up. I feel like coming out of this stupor. I feel like coming out of this depression. I feel like coming out of this hostility. I feel like coming out. I feel like coming out. I feel like coming out. What I love about Jesus is that he was just as much God's son in isolation as he was in consecration, as he will be in altercation. He was still the same. Whether men clapped or didn't clap, whether they were there or weren't there, whether they supported him or didn't support him, do not allow your situation to define your identity. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. Glory to God. I was telling some pastors, I said I would be a pastor if I didn't have a church. I'd be a pastor if I didn't have a building because none of those things define me. Pastoring is an anointing. It's an anointing. It's a flow of the spirit. It'll happen around a kitchen table. It'll happen in a restaurant. When God makes you something, you are that. Whether you got anybody to bear witness to that or not. Oh, don't fool with me. Don't fool with me. You're going to fool with me. You're going to fool with me. If you fool with me, you're going to make me preach. If you fool with me, you're going to start something. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And all of the Godhead set it off. They had to all set it off to correspond with Genesis when they said, let us make the first man, Adam. Let us make the first man at him. And now in the Jordan, the us is at it again. I said the us is at it again. 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 The us is at Let us make man. Let us make Adam. Let us be at it again. Do you ought to tell the devil, you fooling with us now. You're not just jumping on me, you fooling with us. I got an us behind me. I got an army behind me. I got a brigade behind me. I got support behind me. I got secret forces behind me. It is amazing to be able to recognize how the Holy Spirit at one moment can descend like a dove. The Father can speak from heaven and the Son can be immersed in the water. And then the next moment from this pinnacle of spiritual supremacy, 
from, 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 from this apex of spiritual awareness and identity, from this apex of an understanding of the Messiah coming for which they had waited thousands of years, in the very next verse, it plummets from the pinnacle of this height of spiritual supremacy and authority down into the abyss of an altercation. And it wasn't like he just wandered into the altercation. He was led of the spirit into the altercation. See, we don't have that kind of spirit anymore. The only kind of spirit we got today is the kind that leads us into a Cadillac or a Rolls Royce or a Mercedes. The only kind of spirit we have today is the spirit that anoints us to get a new house. We don't have the kind of spirit that Jesus had that would lead you into a fight. Sometimes God will lead you into an altercation because there's something that has to be done and you gotta fight for it. Ain't nobody gonna give you nothing. Let me talk to the young people for a minute. Stop waiting on people to die. Ain't nobody gonna give you nothing. You gotta fight for it. You gotta roll up your sleeves and snarl your teeth and fight for it. There's something you get out of the fight that you don't get any other way. There's something you get out of the struggle, out of rolling around in the ground and get it. You gotta get muddy for it. You gotta get wet for it. You may even have to get dirty for it, but when it's all over, you gonna get the victory. Somebody give God a victory praise. Altercation is a nice word for quarrel. It's a nice word for quarrel, an argument. It's a nicer word for fight. It's a fight, it's a fight. It's really fight, just, it's just one syllable word, fight, epitomizes what altercation is. Altercation is a very civilized sounding four syllable word that really says the same uncivilized thing we about to fight. He was led, y'all don't understand. He was led by the gentle Holy Spirit into a fight. He didn't get anointed and start dancing in the Jordan. He didn't get his tambourine out in the Jordan and start beating his tambourine. He didn't start shouting in the Jordan River. He reserved his anointing for the fight. I think sometimes we spend our anointing foolishly, trying to impress people that don't matter, try to move people that won't be moved, trying to touch people that won't be touched. But whenever the anointing comes upon you, the anointing is literally the enablement of God. It comes upon you so that it enables you to do what you could not do by yourself. Let me ask a question in this room, outside of this room, and around the world. Are you anointed? That was okay. But if you got a cancer to fight, you got to be willing to talk better than that. I'm going to ask you again, are you anointed? If you're trying to overcome COVID, you got to be sure about this thing. Are you anointed? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm anointed. You got to be careful. You got to be careful because you're not just fighting me. You're fighting us. You're fighting us. You're fighting us. You're fighting us. This anointing that's on me, this anointing that's on me is not afraid to go down into a dry place. They went from a wet place to a dry place. They went from a wet place to a dry place because the Holy Spirit is just as powerful in a wet place as he is in a dry place. Oh, have you ever had God anoint you in a dry place? I wish I had somebody in here that was in a dry place because if you're in a dry place and God anoints you in a dry place, hell gets nervous and demons start trembling 
and Satan is upset. Oh, I love the praise of anybody, but when somebody that's been in a dry place opens up their mouth and praises God, hell gets frustrated. I said, hell gets frustrated. If you have been captured in a dry place, going through a tough time, your emotions are working against you, your situations are working against you, or your finances are working against you, and the devil thinks he's got you surrounded in a wilderness of despair, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to praise your way out of it right now. got about 15 seconds. You got about five seconds. Oh! You got about three seconds. Praise your way out. Praise your way out. Praise your way out. Shout yes! Shout yes! Shout yes! Shout yes again. Look at somebody say, I'm still anointed. I'm still anointed. I'm still anointed. I don't care how my emotions feel. I don't care how my mind feels. I don't care what my haters are saying. I don't care what my doubters are saying. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I wish I had a thousand anointed folks in this room to give God some kind of praise. Praise Him like you ain't sick. Praise Him like you're not broke. Praise Him like you're not defeated. Praise Him like you got the victory. Praise Him like you know who you are. Praise Him like you know who you are. Praise Him like you're a king. Praise Him like you're the child of a king. Sit down, let me teach you something. I want you to understand this, this is important. No good boxer prepares to box an opponent he hasn't studied. So we need to study the enemy. We don't talk about the enemy. We don't teach about the enemy. And therefore, we don't understand the enemy. And when we get into a fight with him, we are ignorant of his devices. He has devices. He has wows. He has tactics. Right when you're on the verge of getting what God has for you, he will release a tactic. So when things get worse, it's a sign it's about to get better. Satan is a fallen angel named Lucifer. He's fallen down into the earth realm. But it is not enough for you to know that. Satan is also organized. So if you are unorganized, you are fighting an enemy that's organized. You better organize because he's organized. At one point he defines his brigades as legions. Legions are military bases that move in synchronization. So Satan moves in synchronization. You never from Genesis to Revelations see a demon fighting a demon. He is united. He is orchestrated. Satan is not only a fallen angel, he has a kingdom. He has a kingdom with principalities and powers and regions and territory. There is, there is a demonic influence that is assigned to you.
If you think about it, you've been fighting different versions of the same spirit all of your life. That you, you are in his territory like a commissioner, like a councilman. He has a territory. It could be a family territory. It could be a geographical territory. But Satan has organized that he dispenses demonic powers regionally. You remember when Legion was about to be delivered from the demons and Jesus was about to cast out the demons and the demons said, suffer us not to leave the region. The enemy says, please don't let me leave the region. I have an investment here. I attacked her mama. I attacked her auntie. I attacked her sister. I attacked her brother. I don't want to get out of the region. I don't want to get out of the region. But somebody say, get out of here. I'm taking over my territory. I'm taking over my, I'm about to feel like preaching. I'm taking over my rightful place. When the Bible said, neither give place to the devil, it's talking about taking over your region. You got a region, possess the land. Possess the land, possess the land. If it's your mind, if it's your peace, if it's your body, if it's your health, if it's cancer, whatever it is, possess the land. Claim it, lay hands on yourself and tell them, get out of my territory. I'm bought with the price. I got a deed of trust. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. He's already given me the earnest of the Holy Spirit. My body belongs to God. My whole body belongs to God. My mind belongs to God. My legs belong to God. My head belongs to God. Who am I preaching to? I'm preaching to somebody right now. Let me give you this little bit of study. Go to Matthew 12, 22 for just a minute. I want to back it all up with Bible so you know this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matthew 12, 22 through 28. I want to give you this. This is good. This is good. See, it's good because you've been thinking you're weak or meek or defeated or fail. You don't understand that brigades of demonic powers have been dispatched against your house. against your health, against your finances. You're not fighting no one little spirit. You're fighting brigades of marching forces trying to tear you down, trying to defeat you, trying to destroy you, trying to render you helpless. But touch somebody and say, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar, type it on the line. The devil is a liar, type it on the line. The devil is a liar, put it in the comments. The devil is a liar. You can't have my house. You can't have my son. You can't have my child. You can't have my daughter. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my people. No! Watch this, Matthew 12, 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and the dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And this is what I love about this. And Jesus knew their thoughts. <laughs> Has God ever let you know somebody's thoughts? They didn't say anything, but you could just tell. Every now and then, God will let you know somebody's thoughts. The Bible said, and Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? You're fighting the kingdom. The kingdoms are in conflict. 
The kingdoms are in conflict. That's why you're coming to get word. That's why you're coming to get word. Because when you walk out of here, you got an onslaught, an attack, a warfare that you got to fight through. You got to fight your head through. We got nice little names for it now, insecurities, all kind of little stuff we call it, psychological terror. Sometimes it's not psychological. Sometimes it's just outright demonic. And you got to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And Sometimes we got to go back to acting like our grandmothers and anointing our babies with oil and cover them with the blood of Jesus and walking through the house, oh, walking through the house, groaning and moaning in the spirit and get some of this frustration out of you. You've been through 400 days of trauma. You can't just put makeup on top of that. You got to get in the spirit and start wailing and get that out of your belly and out of your spirit. Get that poison out out of you. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Somebody open your mouth and holler. Somebody open. Oh. I'm going to get it out. I'm going to get it out. I'm going to get it out till I get my sleep back. I'm going to get it out till I get my peace back. I'm going to get it out till I get my joy back. I'm going to get it out until I get my anointing back. Somebody clap their hands and praise the Lord. Come on, give me more monitor. Come on, give God a praise. 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 I gotta get it out. 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 I ain't having no stroke. I ain't having no seizure. I ain't having no heart attack. I gotta get this out of me. Open your mouth and holler like you pray. Sit down, I want you to understand what you're up against. I was doing some research on witches, Wiccans, and Pagans. Witches, Wiccans, and Pagans. Some modern day research. Though the data is sparse, what we do know is that the practice of witchcraft has seen major growth in recent decades. As the witch aesthetic has risen, so has the number of people who identify as witches. The best source of the data on the number of witches in the United States comes from assessment of the Wicca population. Not all people who practice witchcraft consider themselves Wicca, but the religion makes up a significant subset, as Alden Wicker noted, for courts in 2016. So while we've been shouting and while we've been dancing and while we've been praising God and while we've been frying chicken, the witches have been having revival. I said the witches have been having revival. The Wiccans are coming out as an organized religion, a subset of witchcraft as Satan's kingdom is trying to take over territory. He's taking over cities. He's taking over regions. He's even taking over churches. Hallelujah. But the Bible said when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Hallelujah to God. God wants your house to be a standard against the devil. So when the witch tries to hex the neighborhood, she said there's one house I can't get the curse to work on. It seems like something is stopping it because the spirit of the Lord has lifted up a standard against them. Somebody scream, not my house. So Jesus is anointed for the altercation. Look at somebody and say, I'm anointed for this. Elbow somebody, tell them I'm anointed for this. 
I'm anointed to raise this child. I'm anointed to build this church. I'm anointed to start this business. I'm anointed to be this boy's father. I'm anointed to be married to this man. I'm anointed for this. Stop telling me if I was you, I wouldn't take it. You ain't me. You're not anointed to be me. I'm anointed to be me. I can take stuff you can't take. I can deal with stuff you can't deal with. I can fight fights you can't fight because I'm anointed. All the anointed people holler at you, boy. <laughs> I'm almost ready. Sit with me. I'm going a little bit further. So they brought Jesus out to the wilderness. They said, you're anointed in the water, but can you be anointed in the wilderness? Every now and then, Satan will change locations to see if the Holy Ghost will work on your job, to see if it'll work if there ain't no organ, if there's no tambourine, if there's no choir, if there's no praise dancer. But I want the devil to know this Holy Ghost I got will work in my car. It'll work in my front yard. It'll work in my backyard on the lawnmower. Anytime I call on the name of Jesus, hell better back up out of my way because I got the anointing for the altercation. Somebody anointed, give me three seconds of praise. I'm about to go somewhere. 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 Are you going with me? Nudge somebody and say, let's go. Are there any realtors in here? If there's any realtors, wave at me. Wave at me. Realtors, we're going to need your help because we're getting ready to take some titles and some deeds of trust and take some territory that the enemy has stolen. We're getting ready to take it back. There's about to be a transference of deeds. There's about to be a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in its place. Glory to God. I'm about to snatch my my stuff back, snatch my family back, snatch my future back, snatch my prophecy back, snatch my power back. I don't have to be in the Jordan uh, to be anointed. I can be anointed in the wilderness. So for 40 days, he went without food. 40 days without food will make you weak in the body. But there's a difference, Corin, between being weak in the body and weak in the spirit. <laughs> Forty days without food will make you weak in the body, but he wasn't weak in the spirit. And the enemy tempted him for 40 days. And after the 40 days was over, he comes along and the Bible says he saw Jesus was hungry. So he said, if thou be the son of God, Turn this stone into bread. And then he said, Satan took him up on a pinnacle and showed him all the kingdoms of this world. And he said, all of this will I give you if you bow down and worship me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If you just bow down and worship me, I'll turn it over to you. And then he took him up to the top of the temple and said, thrust yourself off this temple for it is written the angels will give charge over thee. Now, everything, the bread to be hungry is not a sin. So how could you tempt me with something that's not a sin? The temptation wasn't the need. The temptation was how you go about satisfying the need. You're not wrong to be hungry, but you got to be careful how you fix it. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. you. You was built to be hungry. There's no sin in being hungry, but Satan will try to get you to take a shortcut. 
to satisfy a legitimate need. It is, in essence, a legitimate need satisfied in an illegitimate way. Satan showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Showed him. The word emphasis should not be on the kingdoms of this world. It should be showed him because it's the lust of the eye. And he showed him all the kingdoms of this world in a flesh. Have you thought about what that would look like? To show him Asia and Japan and Russia and Germany and all of the different countries in Africa and all of the different language. And he did it all in a flash all over Europe and Norway and Belgium and the Antarctica and Australia. All the kingdoms, all the kingdoms of the world. He showed it to him in a flash and said, I'll give it to you. All you got to do is worship me. Legitimate that, you would get, that, that it belongs to me. Because the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. But for me to have to worship you to get it, that is the temptation. And by the way, why would you tempt me to turn a stone to bread when I am the bread of life? Cast yourself down off of this pinnacle, for it's written the angels will bear you up. In other words, show how tough you are. And it was written that the angels would bear him up. But it was not written for him to do things to tempt God. That's why this is my, just my conviction. You can have whatever conviction you want. Feel free to do whatever you want to do. You can take peroxide. You can, you can eat the, the container that the toothpaste comes in. If that's what you want to do, you do whatever you feel led to do. But it is my conviction that if I can do something that will protect me from the virus, yes, God can heal me. But just because God's a healer doesn't mean that I should tempt him. Come on, it does not mean that I should have to tempt him in order to do what he does. But this was the pride of life. You're too important to get sick. You're too important. The angels will come down and get you. Jesus did not need Satan to loose the angels to bear him up. Seeing as Jesus was the captain of the host, and he could have called 10,000 angels on the cross. He did not need Satan to lift him up. But here is the mystery. We have learned a trick. Satan only got three tricks. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. That's all he got. If you pass him three things, you got an A. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. If you can bypass what your flesh is craving for, the lust of the flesh, and how you go about satisfying it, that's the temptation. The lust of the flesh the lust of what you see. Have you ever had God bless you and you was afraid to show people? Have you ever had a dress and you were scared to wear it? Because you wondered could they handle it? Have you ever had a house and you didn't want to invite people over because you wasn't sure how they were going to feel about it? For some people, exposure makes them better. For other people, exposure makes them bitter. When Satan has got a stronghold on you, the lust of the eye 
stops you from rejoicing with those that do rejoice. It's, it's what haters are made out of. They can't rejoice with you because when they look at that, they, say they, 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 they got a hatred about it. The lust of the eye. The lust of the eye. That's why God can't show you anything. Because instead of learning from it, you lust after it. It's easier for you to lust after taking it than it is to learn how to acquire it. All Satan has in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. I'm going to show it to you real quick, and then I'm going to close. Genesis 3, verse 6, and don't even turn to it. I'm going to read it to you. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, oh, that it was good for food, that's the lust of the flesh, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, that's the lust of the eye, and that it's desirous to make one wise, that's the pride of life. The same tricks he used on Eve, he's using on Jesus, he's using on you. All you got to do is flip those three and you got to be the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Am I important? Am I important? You know you like to be important. Am I important? The pride of life. God hates pride above all of them. Because the pride of life will bring you down. Sometimes you need to be overlooked. Sometimes you need to be ignored. Some of you have a syndrome where you need to be seen all the time. Sometimes you need to be ignored because God is killing out that pride of life. See me. See me. Look at me. Come get me. Salvage me. The angels will come get me. The family will forgive me. I'm too important. I can do something stupid. And the angels will catch me. Oh, y'all got quiet. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. That the Bible says that is all that is in the world. John 2, 15 through 17 says that is all that is in the world. You know how the old folk used to tell us, don't be like the world, come out from the world and be ye separate. That's worldliness. Earrings was worldliness. Wearing pants was worldliness. Wearing makeup was worldliness. Uh, men having long hair was worldliness. All of that was worldliness. It was worldliness because they couldn't read good. Let me tell you what's worldliness. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And you can have them with earrings, and with makeup, and with pants on, and wear shorts, and you can go swimming together, and you can still be full of lust in a long dress, down to your ankles, and be lustful, dress on fire just on fire, all the way down to your angle, dress smell like smoke, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, yeah, I said it, I meant it, I'm here to represent it, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, and the pride of life, ain't nothing more prideful than the old church was, with their big hats and their high seats, and everybody had to look up, and everybody had to acknowledge you every time they got up. We had given honor to the bishop and da -da -da -da. we said it 20 times and we still got to say it again. What is more proudful than church folk? The devil is wreaking havoc in the house of God. But I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. 
I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. Nudge three people and tell them, I got a devil to fight. 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 He's been studying me and I've been studying him. And I'm anointed for the altercation. I'm anointed to fight the good fight of faith. I'm anointed to get the breakthrough. You might have defeated a lot of people, but you're not going to defeat me. A thousand shall fall at my right side. Ten thousand shall fall at my left side. It shall not nigh come nigh me. It shall not come nigh me. Y'all scared to say it. It shall not come nigh me. Say it again. It shall shall not come say it like you mean it shake your fist at the devil say it I'm anointed to fight off everything you tried to send to kill me look at me I'm 64 years old I started preaching when I was 19 they said I wouldn't last but two weeks I was scared they might be right but I kept on fighting 19 turned to 20 20 turned to 22 22 turned to 24 24 turned to 28 28 turned to 32 32 turned to 38 38 turned to fighting touch somebody say I'm still in the fight 42 turned to 46 46 turned to 50 50 turned to 52 52 turned to 54 tell your neighbor I'm still fighting 54 turned to 58 58 turned to 60 60 turned to 61 61 turned to 62 63 turned to 64 slap your neighbor and say I'm still in the fight I'm anointed for this fight. I'm anointed for this altercation. I'm anointed for this battle. God wouldn't send Jesus in the wilderness till he anointed him in the Jordan. And God won't send you into the battle until he anoints you. That's why you can't sit up in church with your lips glued together, looking all cute, but you gotta open your mouth and receive the anointing. The anointing. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing you get on Sunday is preparing you for Monday. The anointing you're getting right now is preparing you for what you got to deal with. When you're really anointed, it'll fall off you like water off a duck's back. When you're really anointed, the witch cannot hex you. When you're really anointed, the wicked cannot do you in. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Somebody in this room, some folk have been trying to do everything they could to curse everything you did. But the reason you're still here is that you were anointed for the altercation. And all God wants you to do is learn how to give him the praise. You didn't get here by yourself. You didn't stay here by yourself. You didn't do this by yourself. You didn't survive by yourself. If it weren't for the anointing, you would have lost your mind. If it weren't for the anointing, you would have threw in the towel. If it weren't for the anointing, you'd have been in jail. If it weren't for the anointing, you'd have had a needle in your arm. I want some anointed folk to start praising God for the power, for the power. You shall have power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall have power. I decree and declare power over your life. I decree and declare power over your finances. I decree and declare power over your emotions. I decree and declare power in your family, power over your business. Power over your, y'all ain't receiving nothing. I decree and declare power over your house, power over your dream, power over your vision. I decree and declare no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I decree and declare your joy will be full. 
I decree and declare you shall be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I decree and declare every tactic that hell sent against you, I sent it back. I sent it back. I sent it back in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare your latter day shall be greater than your former day. I decree and declare you go in better than you started. I decree and declare a breakthrough is coming your way. I decree and declare you're coming out with power. You're coming out with victory. You're coming out with an You're coming out with anointing. You're coming out with power. I decree and declare you shall win. You shall win. You shall not be defeated. You shall not give up. You shall not give out. You shall not faint. I dare you to open your mouth and praise your God like you lost your just need a hundred people that'll jump out in the eye up under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and fight that devil out of your life. Fight him out of your body. Fight him out of your spirit. Give me some shout music. I feel the victory about the
warfare. This is not AMC. This is not a movie. This is a fight. When I say praise him, you praise him. We are in a spiritual warfare. Now sing it again. And everything in here, everything in here needs to go in the war. Victory, we got it. This is for Sarah. This is for Richard. This is for Robin. This is for Johnny. This is for Freddie. This is for Junior. This is for Wilson. This is for Thomas. I declare war. Nothing I love. Nothing in my house. Nothing on my property. Come on, take your territory. people and tell them it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work when you get to the seventh person just going to praise. It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. It ain't. When you get to number seven, just go into a praise and watch the curse. Watch the curse. Watch the curse. Watch the curse break. 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 What? That doesn't mean it's always pleasant. That doesn't mean I'm not hungry. That doesn't mean I'm not tired. That doesn't mean I don't feel pain. That doesn't mean it doesn't get tough. But I'm anointed for the altercation. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to win this fight. I'm going to win this fight. I want you to get that in your spirit. When it's all said and done, yes, I'm going to win this fight. Oh, and it is a fight. Yes, and I'm not going to sit back in a rocking chair and let the enemy slap my teeth out. Yes. The devil is alive. I'm going to get some licks in. Yes, I'm going to get some, oh yeah, I'm going to get some licks in. You ain't just going to get to go bragging about what all you did and I didn't do nothing back. I'm going to get some licks in. Yes, Is there anybody anointed in here? I said, is there anybody anointed in here? I 
want to hear an anointed war cry. I want to hear an anointed war cry. All in your house. All in your living room. All in your kitchen. Open your mouth. I don't care if you look crazy. I want to hear an anointed war cry. the Lord is in this place. Surely the anointing of the Lord is in this place. Surely the anointing of the Lord is in this place. Surely the anointing of the Lord is in this place.